This is a Roman dodecahedron. Well, a plastic version of it. Now, I made one of these in the past out of PLA, and it looked pretty cool. But with the PLA version, there still seams to hide, and I wanted to try making one seamless. And now that I have a resin printer, I can print things out of castable resin seamlessly. Now, clearly this version is smaller than the last one I made, but in real life, they were different sizes too. According to the Google, they were anywhere between four and 11 centimeters in size. So this one would still count. This one still needs to be cured. So let's cure it. The resin is cured with UV light. So in this case, I'm just gonna set it in the sun for a bit. Once it's cured, then I need to carefully remove all the supports. Now for casting resin, I use Soraya Tech's True Blue Casting Resin, and it burns out and casts wonderfully, but it is a pain to get it to print well. You can see on all of these lower pegs, it's got a flat bottom. It didn't start to build the way it was supposed to. The upper pegs look good, but the supports, it's like they didn't actually reach or support the bottom of the pegs. And that's kind of typical with this resin. Anything really delicate is hard to get to print properly. There's even one spot in the main body that is like cracked. It's, it didn't print properly. Now I know one key for the resin is to keep it warm. It has to be warm, warm. So I keep a space heater blowing on my printer, but even still, it's not an easy resin to work with, in my opinion. No problem, we will rebuild them. We have the technology. Okay, so what I did is I added a sprue to each, what do they call these? Pins, bulbs, pegs, we'll call it a peg. I added a sprue to each peg where it was flat on the bottom. So that'll become metal. So then when I cut the sprues off, I'll just reshape that metal into a round peg. And where there is that small crack, I just took some wax and filled that in and tried to draw that little circle back onto the piece. Maybe not as good as the Romans did, but I think it'll work. So now, let's invest it. I wanna make sure there's no small air gaps between each portion of wax because investment can get trapped in there and then break off and end up in your bronze. It can cause defects and inclusions. I don't want that. For investment, I use UltraVest casting investment from Rio Grande Jewelry Supply. It's always good to use a vacuum chamber to get those bubbles out of the investment. And then it's ready to be put in the kiln. I'll burn out the resin just like I would wax. This regulator is gonna drive me nuts. It never works on the first try. But eventually, it does work. You know, when the Romans made these things, they couldn't just pop it in an electric kiln and have it melt out for them. You think of all the labor it took to collect the coal or wood that it was required to fire this 
and melt all the wax out. All the work it took to coat everything in clay. Just amazing. We're definitely spoiled nowadays. But that's all heated up, melted out, and ready to cast. I use 100% liquid silicone to make a gasket for the vacuum casting. It works most of the time. On this one, the vacuum seal didn't take, and I tried as hard as I could to get the seal to work again, but I just couldn't do it. I wasn't able to get the vacuum to seal on the vacuum draw, but the Romans didn't have vacuum pumps either, so hopefully it still worked. The vacuum isn't essential, but it does help. Let's check and see if that's still hot. Yep, it's still hot. Let's check now. Yep, still hot. It's important to find the right temperature when quenching. Not hot enough, and it's not effective. Too hot, and it's dangerous. In spite of it not getting a good vacuum, that turned out pretty well. It looks perfect. Now there's one really interesting thing here. I had a bunch of sprues going down to these nubs, and you can see right here, some of the nubs didn't connect all the way to the main riser. I'm thinking it's because it got full first from these central runners, and then these were where the air was escaping, and then the metal started going up. But you can see here, it didn't quite connect, so there is a point where it got vapor locked. Where it didn't have an escape, and it didn't have enough pressure to blow that out. If the vacuum was running, that probably would have been drawn out and full of metal. Every time you cast, you learn something. So if you're venting something, you don't want it to go out the same hole as you're pouring into. Otherwise, that'll happen. But we luckily got away with it. Let's clean it up. And there it is, all done. Now my last video, I had so many people comment and tell me that they thought it was used for knitting. And that is a common explanation for their use, but I don't think so. This wouldn't be good for knitting. And this was an actual size of one. And knitting wasn't a known thing back in Roman times. Whatever these were, they were prized possessions. This one still isn't the quality of the Roman days, but it's still pretty cool. Thank you guys for watching. Come on back for the next one. Bye-bye.